good afternoon and welcome to the program. I have a special guest in the studio. I have been talking about it almost uh, all week, just trying to make the best of this special occasion because we're talking matters that concerns Nigeria, matters that will concern the people of Nigeria and indeed leadership and the lead. But I would like to allow you to crave my, your indulgence. Let me crave your indulgence to give me a little time to introduce a man that I so much heavily respect. And I'm going to do it as if I'm giving him an award because, honestly, if he hasn't got one yet, <laughs> he's going to start from here. <laughs> His name is Professor Atahiru Muhammadu Jega, and he's the chairman, Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Until his appointment as INEC chairman in June 2012, he was the vice chancellor by Aero University, Kano. Professor Jiga's rich academic career saw him serve at various times as visiting research fellow, University of Stockholm, Sweden, Swedish Institute Fellowship, 1994, visiting research fellow, St. Peter's College, University of Oxford, 1996, Deputy Vice-Chancellor Academic, Bayero University, Kano, 1995 to 1996, Acting Director, Center for Research and Documentation, CRD, Kano, 1998, and Director, Center for Democratic Research and Training, Mambaya House, BUK, that's Bayero University, Kano, 2000 to 2004. Other professional and community service positions held by Professor Jaga include being member, Presidential Panel on Review and Harmonization and Rationalization of Federal Government Parastatals, Institutions and Agencies, 1999 to 2000, member, Governing Council, the African Center for Democratic Governance, AFRIGOV, 1997 to 2003, member, Governing Board, National Institute for Policy and Strategic Studies, NIPS, Kuru, 2002 to 2004. Chairman, Governing Board of the National Youth Service Corps, 2003 to 2004. Member, Presidential Advisory Council on Youth Affairs, 2001 to 2007. And Member, Vision 2020-20 Committee. National Working Group on Niger Delta and Regional Development, 2009. From 1992 to 98, Professor Jaga was Director of Research, Nigerian Political Science Association, Member Presidential Panel on Rationalization and Streamlining of Federal Government Poverty Alleviation Programs and Institutions in 1999, and Member Presidential Technical Committee on the Consolidation of the Tertiary Education Sector 2006 to 2007. One of his most renowned service positions was as President, Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, 1988 to 94 was also a member electoral reform yes we're almost there committee august 2007 to 2008 december professor jiga is a recipient of many academic and honorary laurels which include the national merit award of officer of the federal republic ofr by the federal government of nigeria 2005 fellowship award for the national association for research and development 2006 and Man of the Year Award by Newswatch Magazine 1993 and 2011. He's widely published with several books, articles, monograms, and reports in areas such as government policies, political economy, democracy, political process, good governance, and identity politics. Hmm. Professor Jiga is very happily married with children. Professor, you're very welcome to the program. Thank you so very much. I'm you know, very delighted to be here. This is the first time I have read a citation on air about any of my guests. I appreciate so it. I Thank just you. wanted to to justify the fact that this man has earned this position. And how has it been being chairman of INEC? I must say that so far so good. Mm. It's been uh, very challenging. And uh, it's been very difficult uh, work, mm. uh, but I, I think I have been lucky. I have a good team, mm. a very supportive team as national commissioners okay. and as resident electoral commissioners. Mm. And uh, we've been doing our best under very difficult circumstances. Mm. 
well, to say the least, difficult circumstances. You've just finished, for example, um, the uh, distribution of permanent voters' card in Oshun and Ekiti State. How did it go? Well, um, uh, again, so far so good. Um, we are finishing uh, later today. I okay. think 5 p.m. today. Okay. We commenced on Friday. The response of the voters has been massive. People have been coming out uh, to collect their permanent voters card. And um, there have been challenges as usual, particularly in the urban areas okay. where there are in polling units where there are large numbers of registered voters. Mm. Uh, queuing, controlling queues has been a problem. Sometimes the distribution officers were overwhelmed. Uh, but uh, in general, it has gone well. And uh, as soon as we got reports of the challenges, we intervened and uh, ensured that normalcy uh, was restored. So uh, distribution of the permanent voters' cards, it's something we committed to doing mm. uh, nationwide before the 2015 general elections. Okay. And uh, first of all, it will help us in ensuring that in 2015, the permanent voters' cards will be very useful in reducing other areas of electoral fraud. Mm. For mm. example, it is uh, an electronic card uh, it can be read at the polling unit and we intend to read it in order to verify and authenticate the holder of the card mm. so that we will know when somebody comes and presents that card, it will be verified that he is the true legitimate uh, owner oh, no. yes. uh, of the card. So that will bring additional credibility to the electoral process. The phenomenon through which people in the past uh, or politicians could buy uh, cards from voters and mm. then give it to some other people to go <laughs> and uh, vote, uh, which we have seen, you know. Uh, yes. It's something that, uh, God willing, uh, in 2015, uh, this method uh, will address. I, I just let me look forward a bit and say um, the issue of power when it comes to biometrics and all of these electronic, uh, you know, gadgets. Mm. Wouldn't power pose a challenge? Mm. For example, will the computers lose power? Mm. And if they get out of power, how do you handle such situation? Mm. Have you envisaged such things or have you experienced it? Mm. Um, with regards to the card reader, obviously in a country such as ours where yes. electricity supply is a persistent challenge, mm. uh, whatever you do using technology, you have to factor uh, into the preparations how to have stable power supply. Okay. Uh, I want to say that with regards to the card readers that we intend to use uh, in the 2015 general elections, we've taken into consideration that issue. They are going to be battery-operated uh, uh, small machines, just mm -hmm. uh, like your normal, uh, uh, what do you call it? Laptop. Handset. Yes, okay. Handset. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. and all you do is the card is small, like your uh, ATM card. Yeah. So it's just to swipe it on the device and then to read the details as they, they pop up. So the power consumption so wouldn't be too much. the power consumption is not too much. Okay. And uh, we have ensured that in procuring these batteries, uh, the uh, battery life uh, uh, when fully charged is yes. eight hours okay. and uh, in addition for every polling unit we are providing an extra battery, battery. Oh. similarly when we procure this uh, equipment we also ensure that there are sufficient number of redundancies in case of any uh, unforeseen challenge with the equipment, mm -hmm. it can easily be uh, replaced. So okay. we've taken all this into consideration and uh, we feel confident that uh, the methodology we are, are, are putting in place is going to be very effective and it will have minimal, if any, challenges. So I, w I want to believe that um, elections that have taken place in recent weeks and the ones that are yet to come very soon. Mm. Uh, there should be a, a sort of practice for the 2015 um, elections, the major one. Mm. How has it been in this one? Well, definitely um, all the elections we've conducted have been lesson learning experiences for mm. us. Mm. And uh, as we do an election, 
we learn the lessons of that election and we factor it into the preparations for the next uh, elections. Okay. And um, uh, we believe that there have been incremental positive changes, mm -hmm. even though once in a while uh, a mistake is made or a challenge uh, emerges, uh, which uh, gives the public the impression of lack of preparedness. Mm. And unfortunately, because INEC has been uh, has acquired an identity amongst uh, many Nigerians because of the history mm. of the way past elections were conducted, uh, we are not given the benefit of doubt. You know, <laughs> uh, when something happens, uh, because people already assume that uh, it was predetermined, then they will think that. Uh, Aha, uh, uh -huh, you know, they can't do it. Mm. Uh, but uh, frankly, we are very much prepared, uh, having learned the lessons of previously conducted elections, to improve in the conduct of the elections in Ekiti and Oshun, mm. and to also ensure that 2015 general elections are remarkably much, much better mm. than the 2011 elections. How was their number one? Anambara was good except for a major mistake that was made in one local government. There are 21 local governments in Anambara state. Mm. We had a major mistake made by our electoral officer uh, in the distribution of result sheets. Okay. We have undertaken that before elections could commence in any polling unit, all the materials for the election must be there. And we gave undertakings to stakeholders in this regard. Unfortunately, in Anambra, when we conducted the elections in one local government, Idemili North yes. uh, local government, the distribution of the result sheets in particular was messed up. Mm. We have, since 2011, been customizing result sheets to polling unit. Okay. In the past, politicians could one way or the other get copies of the result sheets and they could take them to polling units and arrange either with officials or by abducting materials mm. and then substitute the result sheets. So what we have done is we have now customized the result sheets for, poly, for a polling unit. Okay. So if you move one result sheet from one polling unit to another, mm. it cannot be used. So unfortunately, our own officers, the electoral officer who distributed the result sheets in that particular local government, mm. distributed them wrongly. Who? Uh, so See. we had to retrieve. All of them? All of them. We had to retrieve all of them and redistribute. Mm. Okay. And it took a lot of time before we were able to redistribute. And by one o'clock, there were still wards where the confusion had not been addressed. Wow. And of course, in those words, people became agitated uh, because they thought that something, something uh, foul was, foul happening. <laughs> was happening. And then they now disrupted even ah. the uh, distribution of the remaining uh, result sheets. Hmm. So that created a huge problem until around 4 p.m. when it became clear that even if we now distributed the remaining result sheets and the elections were allowed to take place, it would be dark yeah. uh, before it was concluded. So. so we told them that, look, you know, uh, the initial mistake in distribution was ours. But by stopping us from doing this, now it's too late to, to do this anything. election. Can we agree to reschedule it to the following day? Okay. And they agreed. Okay. So now the following day was a Sunday. But they agreed that we could reschedule it to the following day. We rescheduled it, although that also attracted some other negative <laughs> criticism yes. about doing Being the election. I think it was a wor uh, worship on, on day on for Sunday. Christians. Exactly. Yes. Mm. You know, but um, uh, uh, the electoral law did not say that we can't do elections on any particular day. True. But we have been sensitive to religious uh, 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 beliefs mm. such that we always avoided religious days. But in this kind of crisis situation, mm. when an election had commenced, it has been conducted everywhere except a small area, mm. uh, we thought that it was better to do it and finish with it mm. than reschedule it 
uh, uh, for a few days uh, because that can also attract other negative hmm. uh, consequences for the process. But thank God the people agreed, the community, we did the election the following day and at the end of it, the results from those areas were now tallied together with the results from the other areas and the results were declared. Hmm. Now, of course, there was massive uproar and public criticism and uh, I think what happened, uh, frankly, hmm. was that because of the delay in those areas, by the time we now are ready to announce the results, most of the candidates already had, through their own mechanisms of tallying, mm -hmm. knew who had won and who had lost. And that was why many of them now decided to say, no, cancel <laughs> the, the, the entire election. And uh, you will agree with me that because of challenges in one local government and in fact not the entire local government but mm. in three wards okay. in one local government out of 21 local governments there was no justifiable reason for cancelling the entire yes. uh, results and we did what it was permissible uh, under the law now that's not to excuse us yeah well, i was going to ask you yes, what lesson did uh, in the biggest uh, lesson we that. learned mm -hmm was that our officials have to be really professional, have to be efficient mm. and effective, and have to pay attention to every minor detail yeah. on questions of distribution of materials. Logistics have always been a major challenge uh, for INEC as an electoral commission. Mm. And we've been doing our best. We've been improving. But once in a while, you have this massive... Uh, uh, occurrences, mm. you know, which mm. really uh, threaten to undermine the entire, the integrity of the entire electoral process. So we've been paying attention to those areas and I want to say that uh, those who have witnessed the conduct of the distribution mm. uh, of the voters' cards in both Ekiti and Oshun have seen some remarkable improvements okay. uh, uh, in, in terms of early commencement, for example, in terms of ensuring the register is pasted for people to see whether their names are there mm. before they queue up to collect their cards and also in terms of ensuring that there is early commencement but uh, the kind of mistakes that we had in Edemili North also taught us a lesson about penalizing or holding people accountable mm. for their mistakes mm. so the electoral officer in that local government for example we took him to court we what what happened mm -hmm. is like a disruption of the electoral process yeah. which he could not explain and uh, we felt that he had to be he had to take responsibility yes for it so he had been arraigned he was arraigned and as i speak with you actually yeah. uh the case is uh, uh in court okay mm -hmm. well i just want to uh, commend you for the effort you've made so far but then <coughs> it just shows to you that almost at every situation there is an unprecedented unexpected development yes. something that may not be well you have a template yes mm. but something unforeseen mm. always happens yeah. so with that being the case mm. how prepared are you for the major 2015 mm. Let, before you answer that question by the way 2015 has been touted by almost anybody that cares to play a role even the Americans, the Western world, they all look at 2015 as a troubled year mm -hmm. for Nigeria. And uh, too many things are leading towards that thought. So I'm just looking at it. In the build-up, what are the key challenges for any? Mm -hmm. And uh, some people have said it is the political parties. The others believe it's the politicians that may be the problem. <coughs> but whatever it is, I am hoping that uh, you want to <coughs> sort of clear you know, um, the air on your preparations and how prepared you want to uh, troubleshoot whatever is troubleshootable. Mm. Well, uh, thank you very much. Uh, there is no doubt that 2015 is a very, very important year okay. uh, for Nigeria. And um, the significance of 2015 uh, is that it is a year mm. that we must do everything possible. Yes. Uh, to ensure that um, uh, we conduct successful elections because um, getting it right mm. will go a long way in deepening our democracy 
and uh, in uh, uh, ensuring that we now have a sustainable process uh, of electoral uh, reforms. Okay. So we in INEC are mindful of this. There is very high expectation by both Nigerians and friends of Nigeria abroad mm. uh, for getting it right in 2015. Okay. And we are mindful of that and we f have factored that in our preparations. And I want to tell you that from our own assessment of our level of preparedness and uh, what we have been able to do since 2011, mm. we have no doubt that uh, operationally the 2015 elections will be much, much better than the 2011 elections. But well. of course, everybody, every stakeholder, whether it is a voter or the uh, politicians mm. or the political parties or the civil society organizations or the media, everybody has a role to play to ensure that we succeed in actualizing the aspirations of Nigerians for free, fair, credible, and peaceful elections in 2015. Okay, I'm going to take a short <coughs> break and give you a breather, okay? Are we just looking at security? You know, um, situations like this. Nigeria is, is, is a country that's very interesting. Some people say we are full of desperate people. I'm a desperate man, but positively desperate. I want to make sure that my family is earning a good living and I'm able to meet their demands and all of that. How do you manage, seriously speaking, security that appears to be a perceptive issue in Nigeria? Well, um, I think there is no doubt in the fact yeah. that Nigeria uh, faces systemic security challenges. Okay. And uh, unfortunately, this has been a recurring challenge. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of effort is being made to address the various dimensions of these security challenges, mm. whether it is armed robbery, or abductions of people for demands of ransom, kidnappings, or cases of insurgency, whether it is in the Niger Delta or in the northeastern states uh, of our country. Um, so I, I think it is a challenge that we must do everything possible to empower our security agencies to be able to address. But we must operate within that systemic context. Mm. And um, when we prepare for an election, we are always mindful of these security challenges. And we have done our best to address issues of how can we protect materials and personnel mm. when they are deployed for an election duty. And uh, in addressing these issues, we have worked out very close working relationships with security agencies. In fact, before the 2011 general elections, we established what we call an interagency consultative committee on election security, hmm. which afforded us an opportunity to meet periodically, both at the national level and at the state, at the level of each of the states. Yes. Where INEC officials meet with representatives of all the security agencies to discuss security arrangements with regards to the conduct of an election. Okay. And uh, this has been a very, very useful forum because it has helped us to understand the roles and the responsibilities of each security agency with regards to an election. It has helped us to smoothen interagency uh, rivalries mm. and it helped us to ensure coordination uh, in the involvement of different security agencies in electoral matters. And it has added value. Mm. <coughs> and through that arrangement, I'm very happy to say that if you compare security arrangements in 2011 
with security arrangements preceding in the previous elections yes. since 1999, mm. there were obvious remarkable improvements. And in fact, the professionalism with which security officials have conducted themselves in 2011 and since 2011, you can see clear uh, discernible improvements. Mm. Of course, minor, minor challenges still remain. Uh, some of them associated perhaps with the inadequacy of the number of security personnel. For example, we want to ensure that in each poly unit, there are an average of three unarmed security personnel. Hmm. But regrettably, we've never been able to achieve that. Largely no. <laughs> because of the numbers, you know. The police, okay. the, which is a lead agency for election, <coughs> does not have the numbers. Uh, you cannot bring soldiers to the polling unit. It's against the law. And we've made sure that soldier, soldiers do not uh, uh, go to the polling units. Mm -hmm. Even though they are there somewhere ready in case it becomes necessary for them to intervene if breach of law and order is such that the police could invite them. So in mm -hmm. our arrangements, we've always uh, had that. But there are areas mm -hmm. <coughs> where... For example, the Air Force has helped us in airlifting materials and personnel to areas of difficult terrain. Mm -hmm. The JTF, uh, uh, which is a military, uh, joint military joint, operation, yes, joint has task force, supported yeah. us okay. in uh, particularly movement of men and material in the creeks in the Niger Delta to mm -hmm. avoid uh, uh, unnecessary attacks. Uh, from uh, the militants uh, in, yes. in those areas. Yes. So, in general, we have been doing our best to improve uh, security with regards to elections. I, I, I see, <coughs> you know, I um, look at security mm. a lot more. Mm. And uh, is there a way you can train special, say special agents mm. to play any of these roles? Mm especially considering the number that is limited. Mm. That's one. Number two, the whole issue about uh, the Northeast now mm. is a very different story. And by the grace of God, we hope that uh, before then, things would have eased out completely. Mm. You know, In the event that it doesn't quite ease, mm. is there any plan mm. to, you know, what plans will you have for the Northeast? Mm. Well, um, uh, first of all, you are right that we should conceptualize security arrangements broadly. Yes. Uh, and uh, and uh, I want to assure you that we also do that. Because the issue of security really has to do a lot. Not just by containing violence and conflicts, but even by doing things that can mitigate and prevent the occurrences of, of, of uh, violence or conflicts in, mm -hmm. uh, in, in an electoral environment. So we've been doing that. We've been engaging community leaders and religious uh, leaders in order to promote alternative dispute resolution mechanisms okay. which can minimize the chances of electoral disputes being escalated. Hmm. Um, but more specifically, uh, uh, with regards to uh, those areas where hmm. there are serious security challenges, yes. and you mentioned the northeastern states, yes. uh, frankly, our hope is that the efforts that are ongoing mm. in order to address the crisis in that area and to have emergency lifted mm. uh, would uh, materialize long before the 2015 general elections. Okay, uh, but we are doing everything possible in our preparations, in our strate strategizing. Mm. You know, uh, we are working under the clear uh, uh, notion yes. that elections will take place in every part of this country in 2015. Okay. You know, and uh, of course we have our plans and we have our plans B and plan C, you know, uh, which uh, could help us hmm. uh, be able to conduct the elections. You know, but uh, really uh, we, we have to cross the bridge when, we, when, get when we get there. I, yes. I love that phrase. Yes. <laughs> okay, um, this is uh, Inspiration Radio. And of course, we have a very special guest in the studio, the chairman of uh, the Independent National Electoral Commission, Professor uh, Tairu Jega. 
And he's fielding questions from me, yours truly. I've enjoyed the Monopoly enough, but I want to give you a chance also if you're calling from Nigeria. The phones are buzzing as buzz as usual. I'm having the buzz, as I said, and I will take the first one. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. Sir. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm fine, thank you very much. My question, um, yeah, my first question to, to Professor Jega is around the 2016 elections, definitely. And it's that, um, is there any possibility, for example, of using members of the general public uh, as in one capacity or the other? Uh, people that, hello? Yes, we're hearing yes, we're hearing you. People that you can, I mean, that you can recruit temporarily for the, for the period of the elections and that you would train specially to be used. I mean, people who, uh, I mean, members of the public, uh, okay. p- perhaps people who work in private service. Yes. Okay. That's a good question. Thank you. Yes, sir. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for, for that question. Um, you see, in many other countries, uh, when it comes to temporary election duty, uh, ad hoc staff, as we call them, volunteers are used. Uh Unfortunately, in Nigeria's context, uh, we have not used volunteers so far uh, because of discernible challenges with the use of uh, volunteers. If you recall, uh, up to 2007, we were using public officers of states, you know, state civil servants Mm. as electoral officials. And there were tremendous challenges with that. In some states, incumbent governments will harass those civil servants on election duty Mm. and threaten their jobs and get them to do things untoward. So when we came in in 2011, we felt that rather than using state civil servants to do election, Mm. we would use NYSC. So we've been using use coppers. And we've also been using, when we cannot get enough youth coppers, uh, students from federal tertiary institutions. Okay. Uh, so uh, this has served us well. Uh, the young men and women of the NYSC and the students have done commendable job to ensure the integrity of the electoral process. Uh, as many would recall, some of them, a few, uh, even lost their lives. And it was a very painful and tragic thing that had happened in 2011, where in some areas they were deliberately targeted. Now, as I, we spoke about security arrangements, yes. we've been paying attention to ensuring that uh, anybody who participates in election duty, especially the youth coppers, mm. would have adequate protection, you know, so that they will have uh, the presence of mind and the security mm. to be able to do their job dispassionately. Okay. So yeah. as we move towards 2015, yes. Uh, frankly, uh, w- we are thinking about how we can use more public separated uh, people okay. to participate and to add value to the electoral process. But we are very careful about wholesale opening mm. of the process to volunteers. Because again, Nigerian politicians are a unique breed, if I can put it that way. <laughs> because before you realize it, they will start volunteering people for us who will now <laughs> come and take over the electoral process. But for example, uh, for returning and collation of results, yes. since 2011, we have been using professors, senior lecturers, even vice chancellors of our universities. As we move towards 2015, we can use members of other professions, yes. either engineers or lawyers, you know, uh, to also help in doing some of those uh, jobs. We are working to ensure that we have uh, partnership with many professional associations. And you want to ensure that these yes. people do not even exactly. betray the process. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. We, we have to, whatever we do, what is key in our preparation is to ensure the integrity of the people who participate in the electoral process. Okay. Yes. Now, I, w- I just want you to take, down the no- uh, take note of the questions because there are so many of them buzzing. Hello. What's Good your afternoon, Chief Sonny. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How are you? Yeah, my professor, good afternoon, sir. Hi, good afternoon. Oh, my brother, I'm so happy with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, quick one, 2015. Mm. Uh, the politicians mm. and their parties, mm. we need to beg them, especially the two main uh, political parties, PDP and uh, ACP, APC. Mm. We need to beg these people, please. Mm. Whoever wins, 
let them accept defeat. Mm. Like, first of all, I've been fighting on your behalf. Whenever I call, do this show. Mm. People will condemn Jega. I, I wish they listened to your profile when Chief Sonny was giving out this profile. Oh, Professor Jega doesn't know what he's doing. I feel bad when I hear them saying all this stuff. Mm. You are not the problem. They want I said it. The mm. political parties are the problem. Mm. So I'm begging them. Mm. Prof, yeah. there's no election. Mm. Let me take you back quick. Mm. I wasn't happy when I hear Lai Mohammed and um, the, the governor, Shivali. Before the election, they condemned you. Condemned the police. Condemn PDP, but at the end, what happened? What happened, sir? Mm, yes. Yeah, yeah, so, on the election, right? Yeah, yeah. I okay. didn't hear him to pass on air to apologize to you. Mm-hmm. And in this case, straight from state, like you mentioned, state that you don't want to use their civil servant. Mm-hmm. How come the local government election, the ruling party in that state will win all the elections, both local uh, councillor and chairmanship? Is that possible? Hello? Okay. Yes, right. I'm, I'm yes. listening. So, uh, is that yeah. possible? Well, no. <laughs> they, that question will be answered later. Right, right. Let me Possible. take another call. Well done to the political party. Please, Thank for you. 2015, can you use the, the, the like, the, the, the moms, the pastors, mm. the, the reverend fathers, mm. to, to yes. try that, and let's see how we'll get it right on that 2015. Okay. Okay. Thank, right. Thank you. Thank you Let me take much. another yes. call. Hello. Good day, sir. Yes, good afternoon. Go good ahead. Good afternoon. My question is, the term of us, we register and we don't like to vote. The reason is nobody is worthy of our vote among all the candidates from those parties. Mm. Are they going to be a venue that our own vote will count? <laughs> okay, that's your question, that's right? That's my question. Okay, thank you. Hello. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are you? <laughs> my name is Kenneth Okodi. Sir, so I am particular about voters' education. Mm. This has been a big challenge in the elections so far because we discovered that most of our elections are held, we, we hear about a lot of voided votes, mm. who vote between the margins, and the, the, the kind of people can't even understand the symbols of the parties they want to vote for. Right. This is a big challenge. What was the commission doing or mm. plans to do okay. to help to educate the Nigerian voters so that they will vote right mm. in 2016? Okay. The second thing I want to ask is about. Um, how you are going to deploy everything to ensure that 2015 is credible. Because hmm. this is the years of Nigerians. Right. You are hmm. talking about 2015 as the, as the fighting point hmm. for Nigeria. Yes. And everything rests on your, rest on your table right now, sir. Hmm. And we believe that with you conducting this election sincerely, we believe this country will move forward. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Hello. Hello, good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Go straight to the point. Uh, all right, my name is Akos. Uh, mm. I, I want to ask, how come it's only in Nigeria mm. to hardly win uh, EQBN? How come it's like that? Especially from where I come from, I've, I've, I've witnessed for the past 12 years elections, and uh, I've never seen an EQBN be defeated. Even though it's so glaring, the whole world can see that uh, uh, if you put 200 people on ground for elections, just to vote for EQBN, I can say that loud and clear. But how okay. come we hardly win in Cuban? Okay. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Yeah. Straight to the point. My, I have a problem with the electioneering process hmm. of Nigeria. Yes. Look at it from the content of Nigerian constitution. By the content of Nigerian constitution, the president is the one who has the power to choose the, you know, the, the head of the of, uh, of the I make. Mm-hmm. Now, in this kind of situation, I am wondering how is it possible for Professor Jaga not to be under the direct control of the president? The same thing to the, you know, head of INEC in all the, you know, states. We have in Nigeria, if you know by the head of INEC go to a particular state, and at the end of the day, he is subjected to the authority of the governor of that state, one, due to lack of funds. Are you following me? That's another thing then. The archaic way by which we do our registration in this country, rather than all this wasting money on all these voters' cards and other things, why can't we embrace the telecommunication sector we okay. have read I, I feel now confident to stop you there because you have not been listening to the program since yeah, morning, yeah. but thank you so much all the same. Thank you. So we'll give him a chance to now answer these questions. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, I think the first 
question in this round of questions as uh, the suggested that we should beg politicians so that whoever wins they should accept uh, that and uh, I, I think uh, this is a very commendable contribution uh, there is absolutely no doubt that a lot of the challenges that we face in the electoral uh, process in this country has to do with the attitude and the disposition uh, of politicians and political parties uh, there has been this tendency that people talk about of the do or die mentality of Nigerian politicians. Yes. Everybody wants to win by hook or by crook. And uh, uh, perhaps things have been so bad for so long that people do not are uh, impatient even to see incremental positive changes mm. uh, are happening. But things are improving. Yes. But uh, it is true that uh, many politicians, you know, do not guard their utterances. And uh, sometimes these utterances are capable of inciting their members or even creating conflicts and violence. Mm. So we have to keep on urging our politicians to conduct themselves responsibly in the electoral process. There is also a tendency by many politicians to shortcut uh, the rules of the game. Hmm. And we know that... But if is there any punitive measure if, uh, if any politician is caught? Uh, yes, if a politician is caught, there are punitive measures prescribed in the Constitution. You know, But sometimes uh, to get successful prosecution, you have to have investigative reports of the police you have to go through the court process which is very very slow you know and and it takes time so but a change of attitude by our politicians can go a long way because really if people have an enlightened self-interest about how we can develop this country how we can deepen democracy responsible conduct by those in governance and also those who are aspiring to hold elective positions mm. is key. And unfortunately, in our country, as he rightly pointed out, you know, rules of the game are not followed. Uh, people don't lose gallantly. Mm. If, if you win, then you have won fair and square. But if you lose, then you haven't lost. Somebody must have done it. Either it's INEC, uh, <laughs> who has taken it away from you, or the opposition party has connived and done so. Maybe because of the way conductions were conduct elections were conducted in mm. the past, we are carrying as INEC a heavy baggage mm. of past mistakes. And we are doing our best to keep on improving the process. But really, our politicians must be gallant winners and they must be gallant losers. Mm. And when you lose fair and square, you know, you should accept it. And if you feel that there is something wrong and you do not accept the results, then the rules are there also about what remedies you can seek to be able to correct uh, if there is an irregularity or a fraudulent uh, activity. But the mm -hmm. tendency to win uh, by hook or by crook or to do or die mm -hmm. really undermines the integrity of the electoral process. So I think it's commendable that we have to keep on working. Yes. For example, all registered political parties, as we prepare for the 2015 elections, mm. have already signed voluntarily to a code of conduct. Mm, that's document. good to hear. Yes, which which has explained how. And this has been made public. This has been made public. Mm. How they how they would how they as political parties will obey the rules, how they will conduct themselves, how they will ensure there is internal democracy in what they do, and how their candidates would engage in the electoral process and how in general everybody will respect the rules of the game mm. you know but look at the issue of campaigning the law electoral access campaign starts only 90 days to an election already if you go around any city you mm. go to there are already posters there people saying that they <laughs> elect me or vote for me and uh, we have warned that this is uh, uh, an, uh, an offense you know, and we've been liaising with the security agencies so that really we have to begin to prosecute people 
uh, who have committed these offenses. But we cannot rely on prosecution alone. A change of attitude by our politicians can go a long way. Uh, is there any public awareness effort being made, you know, to, because of this change of attitude you're talking mm -hmm. about? Mm -hmm. Uh, is INEC making some effort towards public awareness, mm. constantly reminding the people these are the do's and don'ts of electioneering mm. and all of that? Yes, we do that. I mean, every opportunity we have, uh, either through these kinds of programs yes. or through our own public enlightenment activities yes. or engagements with various stakeholders, mm. we do our best to make these points about the need for every stakeholder and especially the politicians okay. to come into the electoral process with a positive attitude and to ensure that we keep on cleansing and reforming uh, the electoral process. But okay. of course we can do more yeah. and we have to get other stakeholders to also get involved and to do more. Next person says that uh, uh, there are some of them who, even though they have registered, yes. uh, they are not impressed by the quality of the candidates and we don't want to come out to vote <laughs> for them. And whether there is any arrangement made for them to mm. come and express <laughs> why they can't vote any uh, person. And, mm. and uh, what I will urge uh, uh, the person who asked this question to do is that, uh, I mean, life is full of challenges. At any one point, you have to choose from the options available to you. You know, you may not like everybody, and if your final cho decision mm. is that you don't like any of the candidates, then obviously you can come to the uh, 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 to the polling unit mm. and still use a blank vote. But I will not advise it. I think you should make a choice. You know, if there are two people and you are not impressed by all of them, but at least one will be better. Than the, than the other because somebody has to go and represent you mm. and it is important therefore people rather than staying away from the process become actively involved in the process because your choice will make a difference mm. if you exercise it uh, right uh, Kenneth talks about challenges of voter education and you alluded to it and mm. we are mindful of that successful voter education is a function of resources available and it's also a function of what methodology you use to communicate. Are you satisfied with the resources available? Frankly, the resources available. You know, resources will never be sufficient. Mm -hmm. In a country like Nigeria, where the illiteracy rate, the percentage of the population who are illiterate uh, is high, where there are different languages, if you have to have impact in mm -hmm. communicating with people to understand your messages, you have to use different Language. languages. The cost of doing that is enormous. Whether you are using radio or you are using television or you are even printing. In fact, our experience is that unless you are, you are doing posters, which people can see images and visualize, many of the leaflets that you do will end up with uh, people uh, who wrap Accra with it you know because many people cannot read some of these messages either because they are in english and they cannot uh, access them mm. you know or, or really so so it's a huge challenge but uh, the good news is that we have reviewed our communication policy and strategy in INEC. Mm. we have identified how best to maximize public uh, voter public enlightenment and voter education so I can assure you between now and 2015 elections, we will use multiple uh, media and also uh, have better effective communication strategies to be able to reach as many of our citizens and voters as possible. Mm. Because an enlightened voter really uh, is very important to credible elections okay. and we have to do that. Now, uh, the other question is with regards to the appointment of uh, the head of the Electoral Commission. Yes, uh, whether the, it's by government. Whether it's by government. I, I think I should first of all enlighten about how the, what the law says presently about how the chairman is appointed and members of the commission. The law is very clear. The president nominates, okay. but it is the Senate that confirms so all of us had to go through screening, mm -hmm. you know, and I even appeared before the Senate in full session for about three hours to answer questions, and it was the Senate that confirms the nomination. 
in fact before i my name was taken to the senate it was also taken to the national council of states and it was the nomination of the president going through the national council of states that now went to the senate for confirmation now there may be better methodology of appointing a chairman of an electoral commission in fact the justice always committee electoral reform committee recommended that the judicial national judicial yeah, council is done in South Africa. should make the recommendation yes and then the national assembly will approve you know that is something but i think the most important thing hmm. is not to make the mistake of assuming that because the president nominates then whoever becomes the chairman is totally beholden to the president, to, to the president. i think it's a big mistake hmm. uh, for people to make you know, and I, I can assure people that we came into this thing because we were brought in knowing that we can add value and improve the integrity of the electoral process and everything we've done is mindful of that. And uh, we are not susceptible to being influenced by anybody. You know, what is before us is there are rules, there are regulations, and we must do our work, work with integrity with impartiality and without partisanship. So okay. both myself and the national commissioners have been doing that. Of course, it is the prerogative of Nigerians to seek for a better method of appointing a chairman as well as the entire members of the of the commission. Okay. Yes. And I want to there are so many questions coming from three three nine two three uh Twitter and all of them. There's one from E.A. Jonathan who says, How does INEC plan to ensure electoral commissioners of unimpeachable character in each state in 2015? Mm. That's one question. I want to take another. This is interesting. It said, Good afternoon, sir. Please, for those who have lost their voters' card due to flood last year, how can they get it back? And another person says, um, Is Al Haji Jaga. PDP or APC member? <laughs> Straightforward question. Mm -hmm. Just answer these ones. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> very interesting questions. Yes. Um, uh, again, just like uh, the chairman and members of the commission at the national level yes. are nominated, and uh, they go through screening and approval by the national by the national assembly. The yes. resident electoral commissioners in charge of the state. Uh, also go through the same process. And they also go through security screening in order to ensure that they do not belong to political parties. Mm -hmm. If anybody has any evidence that any one of us in the Electoral Commission belongs to a political party, mm -hmm. they can come out with that evidence. It's sufficient grounds for any guilty person <coughs> to be removed. Mm -hmm. Because the Electoral Law also says that a member of the electoral commission shall not belong to any political party. So Jega is not a member of any political party. <laughs> I have never been a member of any political party. Hmm. Uh, as far as I know, the national commissioners and the resident electoral commissioners were screened by the security agencies and they must have looked at whether they belong to political parties. Uh, before they were also screened and uh, appointed. Mm. We do our job with impartiality, with non-partisanship, you know, and uh, with integrity. Obviously, the challenge in Nigeria, again, which is an issue of perception and attitude, mm. is that if somebody wants you to do something and you do not do it, then they assume you are not doing it to them because you are doing it to the other. To the other you know, and, and uh, really, uh, uh, it is not necessarily so. And the people need to understand this. So we do our best in INEC to be nonpartisan, to be impartial, to create a level playing field for everybody, and to ensure that we obey the rules and we also ensure that all other contestants and participants play. I want to beg your indulgence, just crave your indulgence a bit. There, there are so many questions, but I'll just ha randomly pick one. Mm. When will we give Nigerians in the diaspora an opportunity to vote? And who and when will uh, decide on independent candidates 
to contest. That's OB uh, from uh, somewhere in Lagos. And the other one says, good afternoon. You see, uh, I am an engineer and I'm one who has applied several times to INEC. And now that you say that other professions mm. <laughs> can, uh, mm. you know, um, also offer their services, mm. he's interested in doing that. Um, and so, okay, let me leave it at that and just let you use that. Okay. And then you now mm. advise the public and round off. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, sir. Um, there was a very good question about how to replace lost cards. Yes, yes. The Electoral Act is very clear and specific about what to do. If you lose your card for any reason, hmm. uh, you need to submit an application to the electoral officer of your local government. Okay. explaining the circumstances under which you've lost your card and attaching an affidavit that uh, uh, supports your claim. Hmm. Once you do that, the electoral officer will process your application and you will be notified on the date to go to the our state uh, office hmm. where we have the equipment to uh, provide you and issue you out with what we call a duplicate card. Okay. It's a duplicate because your record are already in the, uh, in the database. So yes. all we need to do is to produce a card once we are satisfied that yes, you've lost your card and there is an affidavit and an application. That's what the law requires. So really anybody who has lost his or her card for any reason, apply to your uh, electoral officer in the local government provide the details with the supporting affidavit mm. you will be issued with a duplicate card okay. now uh, can people in diaspora vote regrettably the electoral act has a provision which really prevents diaspora voting really because yes because the electoral act says that people must register in a polling unit in Nigeria okay. where they will vote. Now, until that provision is amended, mm. uh, uh, we are constrained to make opportunities for people in diaspora to vote. But the good news is that we in INEC, as one of the submissions we made to the National Assembly for the amendment to the electoral legal framework, mm. we recommended that that section should be amended. When that section is amended, then we will begin to examine what are the best methods to arrange for a diaspora uh, uh, voting. Mm. I must say, frankly, that it is unlikely, even if that provision is corrected now, it is unlikely for us to be able to do that in 2015. Okay. But beyond 2015, we will be able now to carefully plan the methodology have the cost implications, have the budget, and then be able to do it. But because there is this legal hindrance, mm. we could not even really do anything uh, about it. Okay, finally, how do you unwind? You look like somebody who's permanently on the <laughs> on duty. Yes. <laughs> how do you unwind? Well, uh, uh, thank God, uh, I, I I was very athletic, uh, if I may say that immodestly, in my younger days. But you still look very athletic, <laughs> I must say. <laughs> so I, I pay attention to exercises okay. and to, uh, you know, unwinding, as you call it, mm. and uh, through games and, and so on. But, but I also have passion mm -hmm. for, uh, permit me to say it, uh, mm -hmm. listening to Hausa classical music. Okay. Not the Damarayas <laughs> and the Dankweros, <laughs> you know, but... Um, in fact, uh, I, I would like to check your database <laughs> so that we can put some of them in our library. That's as well. right. Yes. yes. Thank you. I want to thank you so much mm -hmm. for giving us time. You flew in all the way from Abuja for this program and God bless you, sir. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. take you safely back. Thank you. And thank I you commend you for the good job you are doing. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you so much. And then, of course, you've had uh, Professor Atai Atairu. Is it Muhammadu or Muhammad? Muhammadu. Muhammadu Jega, mm -hmm. who is the chairman of Independent National Electoral Commission. All right. Playing... Uh, Fielding questions on Sonny Rabo Live this afternoon. And for those of you who made all the efforts and couldn't get through, I hope we were able to cover those areas that were burning in your minds. But anyway, you know, it's just a random sampling affair because it's just one hour. <laughs> I wish you were there more. But thank you all the same for the interest 
those of you outside Nigeria, within Nigeria, within Lagos, thank you all and God bless you. And Professor, thank you again. Th thank you very much, Sonia. God take you safely back. Thank you so much. Bye-bye now.